And in the word of God, amen, we're going to find out that God gave commandments. And these commandments that God gave, they were not options. They were not, amen, commandments for you to say, I choose one or two that I like, but the others I won't mess with. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Did not Jesus say, if you love me, you do what? Amen. You will keep my commandments. Somebody say amen. amen. And Deuteronomy 6, verses 6 and 7, said these words right here. Never forget these commandments that I have given you. Take them to your children. Now, you notice here, right? Amen. The, the man of God said two things here. He says, remember them and teach them. Somebody say amen. 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 Now, Jesus said, amen. Jesus said, I'm going to give you out. You don't have to know all the Ten Commandments. Jesus said, know these, this one. Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, mind, and soul. Somebody say amen. amen. And the second one is this. Amen. It's equal to the first one. Love your neighbor as you love what? Yourself. It says if you do these two things, amen, you will fulfill all the commandments that I've given you. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen. 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 So therefore, praise God, you teach. That word teach me, you got to coach, train, talk to, live an example. Somebody say amen. amen. And you got to constantly do what? When you teach, you got to constantly upgrade and teach again. And again, and again, and again. Somebody say amen. amen. In the military, we have a thing we call training. When in the military, we, when we train you, uh, we teach you, we have something called remedial training. Oh. If you fail the test, immediately we put you in remedial training. If you fail again, we'll put you back to what? Remedial training. What are you doing, Pastor? What's the principle, amen? We want you to learn. And we will teach you and coach you and train you to what? You get it. Right. Somebody say amen. amen. How many of you have ever told your child, don't touch that stove, it's hot? Raise your hand. I need somebody to help me because I want to show y'all with me here. What are you doing? You teach them, you train them, you coach them, you tell them, you tell them, and if they touch it and burn their hand, what's the first thing you say? Oh. Did I tell you? Don't touch the pot when it's what? You must get what? A cloth or something in your hand. Somebody say amen. amen. And we teach and we train them. How many of you right now handle something that is hot with something in your hand? Somebody say amen. 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 Because somebody taught you, you can't touch it when it's hot. Amen. Raise your hand. Come on. So, 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 if we teach our children, if we teach ourselves and train ourselves, praise God, that tells me you understand the values of God, you understand the will of God, because you do it every day, you've been doing it all your life. Come on, somebody. How many got children now that are grown and you still teaching them? Ain't no doctor. So I say amen. They still calling you. And you still got to teach them. Well, baby, didn't I tell you? I told you. I, I, this is what my mama tried to tell you. I wasn't trying to get in your business, but I'm trying to tell you now. I told you that go to neck my head, joke up with no good for you. Amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. But mama, I love to heal. But baby, that's more than love. Amen. Oh, come on now, amen. So we constantly, we, oh, y'all want to say amen for your life? We are constantly teaching and training and giving an example to people. Because why? We try to give them a solid foundation that they may live by. Uh -huh. Amen? All right, more here, right? Now, the, the, the first thing I want to tell you, I've got two points I'm going to tell you. I mean, the first point I want to tell you is this. The, the first of all, the foundation for a strong family. Here it is. Amen. The first thing that God told in the commandment was, you should not have no other gods before me. Exodus 22. Amen. Praise God. Exodus 22 says, you should have no other God, G, small G, God before me. Now somebody might say, well, Apostle, what is a God? A God, little G, is anything that dominates your life. Anything that controls your life is a little G God. Somebody say amen. amen. If dropping like it's hot, running the street, controls your life, 
that has become a God to you. Somebody say amen. amen. It's getting high, running to the club, acting a fool. Is that what, if you can't help yourself, you got to do it. You live for Friday. You live for Saturday. You live for turning it up. That's come God. Amen. Some of you shaking your head, but hey, amen. I'm just trying to tell you the truth. Amen. I'm not trying to knock you. I ain't picking on you. I'm not trying to uh, point a finger at you. I just want you to understand so that when you get caught up in it, you understand that is not God. God. That's your little be God that you have created. Yeah. Yeah. I tell my wife all the time, when you create a monster, it's up on you to kill it. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. I'm tired of killing other folks' monsters. Uh -oh. You create the dog on thing, you kill it. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. And I tell my wife all the time, you create it, you kill it. And most people pray God, they create little bitty God that controls them and dominates them, but then they want to run up here and get somebody else to pray it off, lay hands on you, counsel with you for two or three hours, and you ain't listening to nothing they got to say. Somebody say amen. amen. It's your God. You created it. Yes. Oh, Amen. Someone said, I didn't come here for that. I come here here you get shot and get me happy. Make me dance. Amen. I didn't come here for you get in my business. Come on, say amen. I didn't come here to tell you here you tell me the truth about what, what I'm doing here. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. Amen. I I look, I gotta have me a man. I gotta I don't care if it's a piece of man. I gotta have a man. I don't care. Uh, you, you don't understand my situation. Come on, somebody. That little God you got, that little piece of man, come on, somebody. That that guy control your life. Tell when to call, when to go, when to fix his food, run his bad water. Come on, somebody. Iron his clothes. Take your car. Take your check. Come on, somebody. Amen. You created it. You get it. <laughs> Tell him to get out of the ticket. I ain't going nowhere. That's what they said. <laughs> In your house. Somebody say amen. amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. You created it. It dominates your life. Amen. It controls your life. That's the little God. How you look? Come on, somebody. If that's all you worry about, how you look? Say amen. Come on, somebody. That's the little God. Amen. Move on. Somebody said, preach on. Go ahead, man. Move on now. You said this is going to be a short message. You all made my business. I didn't come for you to get all of the business. Amen. Somebody say amen. Who told you about before I got here? Somebody been talking. Now the Spirit of God, amen, is trying to help you today. Now here's a principle, amen. Uh, this is the this is the uh, the foundation for a strong family. God gave you a principle. He said, first of all, God got to be first in your life. You can't have any other God, amen, besides me. Amen. Nothing can come before me. And so, so and whenever God gives a principle, He also behind that principle, He gives a promise. What did I say? Principle promise. Whenever God gives you a principle. Behind that comes what? A promise. Whenever you tell a child a principle, don't stick that bobby pin in that electric socket. Is that a principle? What's the promise behind it? You won't get what? Electrocuted. Somebody give God a hand to with that simple. I know it's simple down in earth, but whenever you teach your child a principle, it, I mean, promise come behind it, is it not? Don't go nowhere with them children. Now you know them folk over there, you know they're crazy. Okay, now. Don't hang out with them. Yes. You're telling your child what? A principle. Yes. What's the promise behind it? Trouble. You don't get in trouble. You ain't going to jail. You ain't getting pregnant. You ain't getting no disease. Come on, somebody. You not getting shot. You not getting stabbed. Somebody say amen. amen. Ain't, a, ain't a bunch of group coming to your house calling you out to fight in the middle of the street. Y'all gonna say amen up in here, right? Y'all seen it on video? Somebody say amen. amen. You not going to the movie theater, praise God, and after the movie you outside fighting? Somebody say amen. amen. Because behind every principle there is a promise. I may know that some of these young people now they go to Regional, is that regional? Regional. Regional. And the kids get outside and walk across the street and they start fighting. Somebody say amen. amen. 
Now, what if they follow the principle that you told them? Don't go out there across that street. Don't be hanging out with so-and-so. You stay right there at that movie theater. When it's over, I'll be there to pick you up. Amen. How many How many you know that some of these children wish they had listened to their family? That's right. Some of them got cases right now. That's right. Because, amen, they went across the street, got in a fight, and now they got a record. That's right. Amen. So I say amen. amen. If they had followed your principle, they would have a promise. Having a good time in the movies, you pick them up and they come home safe. Isn't it all right? Yeah. Amen. All right, move on, right? The principle put God first. In my life and in my family, God said, I demand top priority in your life. Here come the promise. Proverbs 3 and 6. In everything you do, put God first. He will direct you and crown your efforts with success. Y'all got that? Y'all write it down? Proverbs 3 and 6. And here's the promise. In everything you do, put God what? First. And he will direct you and crown your efforts with success. If your efforts, going to school, getting a job, providing for your family, if you are constantly having failures after failures, come on somebody, you know why? You did not put God first. Amen. Your only God will work for you when you put him first. He will direct you and crown your efforts. How many here pray God be making effort after effort? You are try. We don't call it effort. We try. We say we do. I'm doing all that I can. I'm doing all that I know. Yeah. Ain't nothing working. Now I'll go back to what I used to do. Come on, somebody. Because you never put God first, it's why you don't have success. Amen. Somebody give God a hand and pray for that. Yeah. I know it's simple. I know that it's direct. But I must tell you the truth. The word of God I and mean, in Proverbs 3 and 6, go home and read it in any version you want to read it in. It's going to tell you the same thing. This is God promises. You put God first. And everything you do, put God first. He will direct you. And then God's going to crown you. Your efforts will success. God's going to put a crown on you. I ain't going to reward you with success. I'm not going to reward you with fame. I'm not going to reward you with all this different stuff in the street. I'm going to reward you, your efforts with what? Success. Let's move on here. I was going to, I'm going to move on. Can I get you out of here? Amen. Number two. I'm about to close here. Number two. How do I put God first? Somebody say amen. amen. We're going to look at, praise God, five points here. Five given, God given priorities. In your area, that you put God first, you will have success. Are you ready? I'm about to close now. You guys must say, "Give me a good time." Now, give me about five more minutes. You wake up. Come on, lift your hands to God. Say, "Help me, Lord." Wake me up, Lord. I need this. All right, here we go. Number one, finances. Put God first in your finances. Let's start with the most difficult one. The most difficult priority in your life. Is your money? Somebody, oh yeah, got one clap, one clap, one clap, one. Come on, let's try it again. Uh, put God first in your finances. Uh, uh, come on, somebody. You know, like I know, your money is one of the hardest things for you to give up when it comes to the church. Y'all smile back at me. Don't, don't look at nobody. Just smile back at me and tell the truth. Amen. Now see, we want to be free today. Isn't that right? Your money is the hardest thing for you to give up. Somebody say amen. amen. That's why the government takes theirs out for you get it because they know you ain't giving up. They know you ain't paying them taxes. They can take theirs. Somebody say amen. amen. Then they'll tell you they took it too. And they'll tell you how much they took. Somebody say amen. amen. And they'll do it every time you get paid too. I don't care how much you complain. What well, fight us, fight us, fight us. <laughs> Stay federal, my God. Somebody say amen. amen. They'll take yours and show you what they took. <laughs> They'll take what you got left. Somebody say amen. amen. But God wants you to give yours, amen, out of your heart. See, uh, Proverbs 3, 9 and 10 says, Honor the, honor the Lord by giving him the first part of all your income. And he will fill your barn to overflow. If you learn to put God first by giving your offering, uh, offering to God, God says, I'll fill your bars and they will overflow. In other words, praise God, your credit card, you have the max amount. Somebody say amen. 
Oh, come on now. 